fantastic and capable film students. Oh, I wasn't sure how he was going to show up today. Uh, Emily gave my went to the uh, Great Film Festival in May. It's a red carpet event. And Gabe shows up in shorts and flip flops. Uh, so this is impressive. This is your, like your, put a mask on you, this is like your superhero yes. uh, version of you. Mm -hmm. Segue into Gabe Book. Right. So the first thing I'm going to want to say is Abby start filming. Second thing I'm going to want to say is thank you all for coming and watching my beautiful say. Um, there's another really one good one being presented across the room from Bioloid, and if you're much more interested in the economics of Brazil, then please go enjoy this. However, if you're here, whether it's because you enjoy CPR movies, you're one of my friends, or you just want to get out of class about listening to an economic speech, then thank you for showing up. But without further ado, let's get on our way. So first, let's talk a little bit about my secret identity. My name is Pierre Batista, for all of you who don't know. Um, I was born on March 26, 1999, in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And depending on who you ask, or whether it's my parents or my birth certificate, I was either born in Kentucky or Tennessee. I don't know which one's lying, but I hope I'll find out soon. I lived around the world due to my father's rank in the military, being special forces. We've lived in exotic places such as Okinawa, Japan, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Brasilia, Miami, and then we lived in Washington State. It's a fun place. Don't get me wrong, it's cool. I have a pretty good family um, that includes seven members, that, including myself. There's my mom, my dad, my my younger brother Marcus, me, and then three lovely sisters, one of which is in the audience. <laughs> um, as I present this, and as like if you ever get to read my EE, um, you'll find one thing out about me. I am a very big nerd. And I think I kind of have to be in order to write a 4,000 word extended essay on comic book superhero movies. In fact, I think thinking film is my topic just sets off some red flags. And I'm sure the only other person who picks film will vouch that we're both pretty big nerds. <coughs> um, and if I can have any desired superpower, just going a little bit into the topic that we're dealing with, it would be to have massive amounts of money. Because what I've learned from these movies is that whether you're Iron Man or Batman, you can compete with the whole for Superman just because of your resources. Now let's go on to the origin story of my DE, basically how I came up with my research question. Now, um, once I joined the IB and once I was told that I would have to write a 4,000 word essay, my first initial reaction was, why did I do this? Um, but after I calmed down a little bit, I realized the topic I want to do is film. It's arguably one of my favorite topics during the IB, um, and it's reawakened some passions that I put to sleep a while ago. If you were to ask little mini Gabe like 12 years ago, what would he want to be? He wouldn't have said the football star or the astronaut. He would have said the movie director. Um, and that was something that I put to sleep a long time ago because I thought it was unrealistic and could never happen. Well, thanks to the IB film program here, it's reawakened and discovered my love for directing. So the thing was, the thing is though, now that I had my topic, I had to decide what do I want to write 4,000 words on. And going to the Beauty Bill States last year, they're gonna work, I'm just still going to tell you, what your biggest thing you want to do is you want to pick a topic that you're worth thinking, um, researching, that you want to look into. And so the first thing that came to my mind was Batman, because I love Batman. Like I've grown up with superheroes, but Batman has just been the one that's my favorite. And it's kind of the whole way that he operates, where he comes in and he can either beat everyone up, however he can still articulate and be able to outwit the smartest of opponents. So I knew, I knew I was going to do film, and I knew I was going to be Batman. However, the question was, what was I going to do with those two components? So while brainstorming one day, I thought, there are a lot of Batman films throughout history. In fact, if we go from the 1960s up to Adam West all the way to now, there's about 9 to 11 Batman movies that are light action that are released. And so with that information, I thought of a research question that was like, how has society changed as shown through the Batman films? And that first question got me pretty, like, pretty far. I wrote 2,000 words on it um, for my extended essay. I'll talk more about why it changed. But my game plan was basically I was going to watch all the Batman movies and see what changed depending on how society does. So if there were more African American movies, I would have broken that down. Not the best game plan, but it got me to where I am today and I couldn't be more thankful of it. Um, so I did some research and the more I researched, the more I found out I'd have to expand my research question. 
Now, what was I trying to prove with like a thesis? My thesis was trying to take these films that, I mean, a lot of people consider them just as films that go to like be entertaining. They just look at them and they're like, oh, that's just a popcorn flick. It's used to make money and teach people that these movies are actually a lot smarter than that. They actually appear to be. They're not just some dumb movie where like the hero comes and beats the villain. They go through struggles, they go through their lives. The villains have changed in order to cope with the fears of the people. So what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to put the people who made these movies, whether it's Joss Sweden with the Guardians of the Galaxy or the Avenger movies, the Russo brothers with Captain America, or Christopher Nolan with the Dark Knight trilogies. They put a lot of thought and care into these characters because they truly do love the source material that they're using, and they truly do use it to the best of its abilities. Now, what did I do to research? Well, with my old game plan, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to watch Batman movies. This is a good reason to watch all the movies of this character that I love. And I did. Like, I watched them all from Adam West all the way up to eventually when Batman was Superman when I came back. Including Batman and Robin. Yeah, not the best movie ever. But I watched them, and I was able to take notes on them, and I actually got pretty good. However, that wasn't enough. So I conducted a survey. And it was a simple survey. It was mostly three main questions. One, do you like superhero films? Two, are they your favorite types of films? And three, why do you like superhero films? The third being the most important. I don't know if any of you guys answered the survey, but some of them ranged from really um, thoughtful questions like, oh, because they give us a hero to look forward to in our dark days, or they take us to a world that we would rather be in than the dark one we are now. Two ones that just goes, because they're dank. <laughs> I kid you not, that is one of the responses I've got. Uh, dank is like, cool. Oh. It's, <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you for whoever said that, if you're sitting here. Thank you. So obviously I took the more complicated ones and I used them in my essay to help explain uh, why these superhero films have become so popular today and that they can touch with all the people that watch them and that every, even though they are abnormal people with like abnormal powers, they're still all super relatable. Um, and finally, another big source of my um, research was the IMDB or the International Movie Database. Um, it's basically a, a big website where you can just go on and you search up a movie, it'll give you like the specs of like the cameras that were used, like who directed it, all the actors, and just and help you with some factual check. My allies, or basically the source of my findings. What did I find um, while I was researching CE? Well, as I said, I had to change my EE to go from a very narrow topic, which is Batman, to a more broader topic, which is just superhero movies in general. However, I stayed within the comic book. So if you were taking movies such as um, Super A, which can be considered a superhero movie, it's not comic, it's not based off of comics, so therefore it was not included. Um, so what I was finding was I was looking at how society, what has changed through society as I've watched these superhero movies. And what I found was actually really interesting. I thought I was just going to find things like, oh, now there are more women in superhero movies. They're no longer just playing the damsel in distress. Um, or now that there are more African-American people. Because before in the old, in the old Adam West Batman, there was only one African-American character. And he had one line. Where now Black Panther is about to have his own movie in the upcoming two years. So I, 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 read, I found those changes and I think all good, but the ones that were more interesting were the ones like the villains. Um, the villains have drastically changed over the time. Uh, they no longer are the Nazis or the German powers that have a lot of firearms, but it's more of the quiet killers, the terrorist groups such as ISIS or Al-Qaeda that people are more afraid of. And that's shown throughout these movies. Um, a lot of you guys know Captain America, one of his biggest um, organizations that he goes up against is Hydra which is basically like a second version of the Nazis. Um, and like, although they are still used in this movie, they're not as um, out there as they were back in the older versions. And now we have heroes such as uh, villains such as the Joker, who doesn't really have, he's not really that strong. He doesn't really have anything. But the one thing he does have is just that shock factor that he's able to take his ideas and terrorize an entire city because no one knows who's going to be next, where he's going to strike, or what he's going to strike. And those are the exact same fears that are shown throughout in today's society with threats such as ISIS and Al-Qaeda, where you never know who's going to be hit. 
Another thing that is deeply changed is the tone of these movies. Going back to the older ones, you can tell that the tone was a lot more lighthearted. The good guy would always win. It would be kind of just like, he might have like one or two struggles, but it was most likely that the, the um, dialogue was more lighthearted. Even the villains weren't really that cynical. They were just out for money. Where nowadays, the tone of these movies have been turned much, much darker. Where the villains are now actual psychopaths who don't care for money. They just want to see the world burn. Um, I quote from the Dark Knight trilogy, um, where Alfred tells Batman, some men just want to watch the world burn. And that's what these, um, the tone has changed. And that's why the tone has changed to become much darker. The, even the heroes themselves have become much darker. Um, in the recentest version of Batman, Batman vs. Superman, um, I know a lot of you have seen it would, um, would agree that he's a lot darker in this film as he just goes around killing people even though in some sources it says that's one of his big no-no's. The audience has also changed. Um, back, um, people have matured over, over time since like the last 50 years to the point where now that there are more mature superhero movies coming out. Um, the older ones, they, like I said, they were all lighthearted and not really like as far as like not really vulgar to where within the past year we've released one of those vulgar movies ever called Deadpool, which if any of you guys have watched that movie, you know well aware that it deserves its R rating. Um, so that's so this is basically what I found that I have like changed and what I like try to incorporate into my EE. Overcoming my doomsday. What were the biggest struggles in my EE? A lot of people would tell you finding a topic and finding your research question were a big trouble. For some reason, mine wasn't. I always knew right away I was going to do film, I was going to do Batman, and I, would, and I found out quickly that I was going to find a society that has changed throughout superhero movies. Um, however, taking that idea and turning it into a 4,000 word essay was a struggle. And like I said before, I had to change it and adapt it in order to make the 4,000 word, to make it an actual EE that's presentable. Because instead of a 2,000 word essay, which I had earlier, and then I had to scrap and restart all over again. But I don't regret any day of it because what took me half a month to write 2,000 words took me about a day to write with a new topic. The structure of my essay. One of the biggest problems, I'm not saying my structure is perfect right now, I know it's far from it, um, is how I was going to lay out my main um, structure. And I'm going to talk more about this about when I talk about my actual essay. Um, but the structure was really confusing because I had three main points that I didn't really know how to fit them all together. And eventually they all flowed in some type of coherent motion, but at the beginning I was kind of all over the place. Um, keeping the importance of my essay um, was one of the biggest things. Um, I, after I wrote my essay, I was done with it. I was like, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. I was like, nope, I'm not touching this thing ever again. It's good enough. And then I gave it to my advisor, Mr. Blaine, and he's all like, Gabriel, you have some good things in here. How are the good things? Take up one fourth of your essay. <laughs> and the other three fourths are just fluff. <laughs> and like he told me that a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was my fault. I didn't give him the EP yet. And like, I, I was procrastinating, which I do a lot. So with this, I, I made some edits, and like, they were really simple edits. Most of like moving stuff around, adding a few things, taking out a few things. So I was able to um, fix that as far as that point, and to focus more on the what has actually changed in society, rather than why these movies are popular. Because if you read my EE like a month ago, it would be popularity change. Where now it's more like popularity change. More people, coherent. Um, and now the main problem with my EE is because my EE is not completed yet. I'm still going to work on it until I finally submit it to the IV. Is keeping it within the work time because there are some things I still want to add. Like I haven't added in the tone changing yet. I haven't added in the audience has matured. But I'm at 4,800 words. So, um, 3,800 words. <laughs> so I was like, oh, thank God. But now I'm at 3,800 words, and now I have to try to take some things out that aren't as important to add in these more important parts in them, or maybe just not add them in because they're not important. They're not as important as other ones. So I still have some decisions to be made about this film, about this EV, that I hope, which I, I will do before this do. <laughs> now my infinity gauntlet, or my weapon, or my EE, what I'm going to use to defeat the IV. <laughs> the infinity gauntlet, if you guys don't know, is a weapon that Thanos uses to control 
control the world, and it has six power gems in it. And basically, each power gem is a part of my uh, essay. I have my intro, which basically is, is basically an essay intro. It goes through what you're going to research, and it has your um, uh, research question in there. And it's going to basically give you a little overview of what you're about to read. Then I have the popularity of the present. Um, I go and I think of ways of how why these popular movies are popular now. And a big help was through that survey. Because although I got really thoughtful ones, I also got really unthoughtful ones. But I got some that would be in the middle. I got ones that said, because they're cool, they have good effects, I like the action, the comedy. And I go a little bit into that and how, that, 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 and how the, the directors are able to take all these aspects and make them into a generally entertaining film. Um, the next part is popularity in the past. Now basically I'm looking at the past and how, why these films became so popular. This involves more research through secondary sources, like going online, seeing oh, why are these films popular back then. And I found out there are actually really similar reasons. Um, people like the action, people like the comedies. There were more reasons than um, back then. Like people liked seeing their characters on the screen. Because as far as like graphic novels now, uh, they were a lot popular when they were first being released. Um, because they were used as more of a means to escape than they are now because we have more ways to escape. So people would go see these movies to go and they would see their favorite characters on the live screen and watch them interact with their favorite villains. Um, the third one, which used to be my smallest, but now is getting bigger and bigger every day, is evolution. And how basically society, how you can see the change in society throughout these films. Like I said in my findings before, the villains have changed to match the fears of the people. So have the um, heroes themselves and the clones in the audience. That's basically where the meat and the grit of my essay are. Um, I have my conclusion, which wraps it all up in a nicely tight package and my sources. To my sidekicks, or any of you juniors who are going to write this EE, -E. okay, um, don't fear it. Like, I know right now it may seem like a daunting thing, like you're thinking 4,000 words, how am I ever going to do that? Well, I was thinking the exact same thing, and trust me, if you guys can do it, I mean, if I can do it, <laughs> if I can do it, you guys can do it. Um, but that's like a biggest thing. Because there I've seen people who are I've seen people who have stressed over not even think, just thinking about the EE. And that doesn't help at all. And then there are those people that don't care enough about the EE. And although that's not a horrible thing to do at the moment you're at right now, you should still start thinking of like what topic, what's like one thing you want to start researching. Um, like I said, pick a topic you're interested in. For me, it was superhero movies, so I actually had a lot of fun at YTC because one, it was about a topic I loved, two, it was on a subject I loved, and three, it gave me an excuse to buy superhero movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't stress. Like one of the worst things you can do right now is stress. Um, stress yourself out because um, while doing this along with the other IB students, and you'll realize that the other IB students in your grade are going to probably be biggest help you're ever going to get, um, emotionally and physically. Because sometimes there are just those days where your hand just feels like it's cramping because from too much tiny and they'll give you a nice massage. <laughs> but no, especially mentally, because you're going to be like, oh no, 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 what am I going to do, what am I going to do, I can't do this anymore, do tomorrow, how am I going to write 4,000 words in tomorrow? You just need that one person, just that one person who's going to go, okay, you should have done this earlier. <laughs> and then you have that one person that's going to go like, do it now. And you're going to do it. And it might not be the best, but you're going to have to realize that this will take work and that this will not just be done overnight. Don't do what I did and write your EE in three days. Or do what I did and make your David Jose presentation last night. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. Thin. <laughs> So the first one is that you do mention it quite often in the essay that there used to be an old era of superhero movies and then nowadays there's a new era. 
So it's safe to say that the Iron Man movie, the first one with Robert Downey Jr., was the rebirth of the hero Asian movies. Ushering a new era for superhero movies. What factors influence that come back in your opinion? And how do these factors apply to the movie? What made people regain this love for superhero movies? Uh, I don't want to say that it regained the love. I just think that I put it back into the social norms because before that there were still superhero movies being made. Like Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins came out in 2005 where Iron Man came out in 2008. And those movies are critically acclaimed to this day still. However, with Iron Man being the first main Marvel franchise in this whole MCU that they built in, which is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, if you don't know, um, what it did is like, what it did, did change it because it added a whole new layer to it, like a whole new layer of storytelling and how like no longer is it just a one character movie, but they're like, they're, it's one character, but what he, that character does affects the entire universe of characters. And I think that's one of the reasons why people are like so engrossed into it, is because like of the way that they interact with each other. Uh, I have one more question, this one's regarding how about society being more accepting of like new gender and race in movies. So fans are very divided on the decisions of Marvel or NBC to switch back to races, for example, such as Nick Fury going from like to black, Johnny Storm, and the Fantastic Group, group and even Kind Bell, which is a god from Norse mythology, which is known as the whitest of gods and is classed as a black man. Um, do you believe that it's justified uh, to change characters' races just for the matters of like social integrity or do you believe like, I, I believe this could like, fit in nicely to the since it's one of the main talks about saying how society has changed. Um, I think as far as like taking a character that was originally another color and recasting him as a different race, um, has it, I can see how it happens, um, how it happens troubles with hardcore fans of the comics. Because as I grew up, they read it and they always thought Nick Fury is white, Nick Fury is white. And then Samuel L. Jackson comes on and he's an African American, and but however, I think as far as the direct as far as directing goes for like the directors, they want to put in the best person for the job. And I'm I'm vouching for this, but I think that Nick Fury played by Samuel L. Jackson would be the best option. Okay. And two suggestions that are not questions. Um I tell you, um, for your essay, more data and statistics, like there are very few numbers in like for example, reviews, critics or like what box office gains for each company. And I tell you to read it because there's still a lot of characters. <laughs> yeah, that probably killed Mrs. Sweden. I enjoyed it. Oh, actually, one more comment. It was really entertaining. I actually enjoyed reading your ED. Thank you. Could I go through the questions and answer questions? What's the label to me? What's that? The questions or the suggestions? First, Gabriel, uh, and Gary, thanks for the invitation. It's, it was really good for me to read the essay because uh, to see a student thinking about art instead of just enjoying it's what we are here and the IP programming and the American School of Business do. So I guess that might be inspired for you guys that want to. Uh, think about So, uh, I have just, I mean, I, I enjoy your, your essay too. I think there are some crucial points to uh, improve. Uh, but your research question was very interesting and creative. And I think it lends a, a lot of room to be explored, especially for a social scientists doing like me when I see social reformation and the students think about society, societal changes really caught my attention. So for, I just have some questions. On page right. seven, you speak about the fighting scenes and you claim that the innovations of these fighting scenes are what keeps the films feeling fresh, even if they don't follow a similar formula. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the innovation and the similar formula seem to be very yeah. contradictory yeah. argument. So what, what do you mean? Um, I mean, well, by that I meant is that um, at the end of the day, it is just two dudes fighting. However, what the director chooses to do is they add a special twist. Whether, like I mentioned in their Ant-Man, where they use the smaller environment of the briefcase as obstacle hazards in order to make it look like it's 
it's not just two dudes fighting, but it's two dudes fighting and fighting against the environment, uh, trying to not only beat each other, but trying not to get squashed by the giant foe that's about to come at them. Yeah, maybe, maybe we kind of rewrite this, or I mean, for a more teacher like me, it's still like a bit of a contradiction in terms of argumentation. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have something that was very special for me as a philosopher teacher, and I know that uh, Mr. Sweden works with you too. You speak about that the world needs a hero. Mm -hmm. Got it? And the hero idea is something that has been in our culture, Western culture, since the follows. Yes. Something like that. Uh, and you claim that like the real world, the real world Gotham uh, does not have a hero. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think there, there's something in the movies that represent our society nowadays in that we might have a certain Captain America always saving the day. And that speaks about politics and culture and a lot of relationships. Exactly. Uh, so, having said that, I think uh, my suggestion would be for proof reading regarding mechanics and punctuation, adding some word repetitions. You have the vocab. So you don't need to say however oh, 10,000 million times. I know you have it. And that might be annoying, but it makes your text, text flow better yeah. for the one who's reading. Okay? Uh, I have a question for you that is related to what you obviously said. You speak of a renaissance of the gender. Can we speak of a renaissance of the gender? Of the genre, yes. Exactly. Uh, like, okay. Um, well, basically, um, I, in my essay, I basically say that recently that there's been a big surge of new superhero movies coming out. And why I speak of that is not just the fact that there are more being made, which there are. Um, going back a few years, you can see one with one or two are being made um, every so often. Where now it's basically the norm where you're supposed to have a few superhero movies each year produced by a different company whether it's DC or Marvel or Fox producing their Marvel ripoffs. <laughs> yeah, I ask you about this because the first superhero movie comes from 1941. Right? Uh, that is, I forgot. Yeah, the answer of Captain Marvel. The Flash Gordon was the 36th. The Flash Gordon was the first one. The Flash Gordon was the first one. The first one. And you claim that they started during the 60s and the 70s. So I guess there's a bit of research to be more solid in, in terms of playing on like that. Because right, you haven't seen all of Batman movies, but you have seen Batman in 1941. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and that would, would make room for a lot of uh, what the yeah, says, intellectual initiative or inside and depth understanding, comparing or right. contrasting those movies with the society and how it has changed. That is. Your research question asks you that. I think the popularity is still here and the society is coming. Okay. So if you can balance that, yeah. you have the asset. Yeah, because you got 1940s, what's going on in the 40s? You got the 60s, what's going on in the 60s? Yeah, okay. No, that's it. It's great. So to add on to what Sarah just said, you could also add a lot of symbolism because a lot of the buildings. Like, you did speak here in your presentation about all the different fears of society, but it kind of lacked in like saying, oh, Red Skull is basically fascism, Joker is anarchy, everything like that. I feel like that would be like cool to show the symbolism in your essay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah, make, like, um, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Let's have Mr. Sullivan. Great, so I, uh, thanks, Dave. Yeah. I enjoyed the essay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, I think I'll make some notes here, but you, you, talk, you talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned this, it's popular. It was popular in the past, this kind of superhero movie is popular in the present. In other words, it's appealing to a wide audience. Yes. Who, who would you say that audience is? Has it changed from the past? I mean, who, just as Jean mentioned that, if statistics, you know, breaking down that audience, who exactly is the, is the audience in, in that sense of being popular? Well, who would you say? Nowadays, the audience is basically anyone who likes good films because they've made these films to where everyone can enjoy them. Um, as I said, like they have the action, the comedy, something, something that's for everyone. Um, however, back then it was probably more it was it was um, geared more towards the people who 
read the comics, who like the characters, to go see these movies, um, to see that there are heroes. Right, yeah, yeah. Just, just following on from what uh, Mr. Alvea said about the hero, this idea of the hero, just as a suggestion, I wondered if you could uh, put that idea against some kind of theory, like Carl Jung, the archetypes, the hero archetype, yeah. or could, could you relate it to, mm -hmm. um, you know, what is the hero, what are the qualities of the hero? Um, okay. the, there's kind of archetype figures, the mentor, the tempter, the, the maiden, the protagonist, you know. Um, can, can you, is, in other words, is that why it's got wide appeal? Because they're, they're universal in cultures all over the world, which, and so we, wherever you are in the world, you can associate Every culture has that kind of story, that kind of narrative of a hero, and I'm wondering that might explain why. But it's such a wide appeal as well. Just as a suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, I think I mean, these suggestions are, are awesome, and you probably can focus just on the evolution of the, of the social changes and the connections with the mirror, what's, what's going on, just on that, and less on popularity things. Although I, I think what would be interesting in terms of the evolution Spielberg last year had said that uh, the, the superhero movies are going to die, like the westerns. Yeah. And if it's going, to, if it's going to survive, uh, what do you think would have to happen? Like how would it have to evolve and change? It's different from, it's different from now. It'll keep the yeah. Um, I think one big step forward in that direction is actually making movies that are more mature, um, such as Deadpool and such as the upcoming Wolverine movie, uh, which is said to have an R rating. Um, like again, like I, as I said, I'm trying to expand your audience so you can get even more people in. Um, also, by not, by trying to change the, like I think one big thing I have is if you change the story, don't have the good guy win. Um, give it a little twist, because like these movies aren't just one movie and then that's the one story. These movies branch off into other arcing stories and they create an entire universe. So one thing that would definitely add freshness to it is if the good guy lost in the movie, and how that would help change the entire universe as a whole. It's like our superhero, our superhero wins. <laughs> but I like, but I like that the, the the Joker scene where they you talk about that one, um, where you've got and that's creative script writing. You know, it's insidious. It gets us to think about, you know, like when we do that, we press a button to to, to try to save ourselves. Those kinds of things are, I think, what keep people now, right? They're uh, insidious, like, you know, groups like Al Qaeda are insidious. Like, how things change, I think, are super will have to change the time. I think we are. Anybody else have anything? I have to say something. Okay. So, yeah. dude, uh, I mean, I have been watching people of the series for I don't know how long anymore, and really, Lord was the best. Thank you. This is for creativity and engagement in, uh, in trying to connect to us. I don't know if that, is if that is possible in the essay, but remember titles. Just like you have done here, your allies, your, that shows how much you like the topic. And that is not in your essay. Why did you came to chose superheroes movie? Those ideas, they are, they are more interesting than dry. So you have something to explore. Alright, okay. thank you. And thank you all for coming. Um, <laughs>